Good morning. I'm Joanne Jobin, your Vid Media host. Welcome to the inaugural Sendero Resources Investor Town Hall Forum. Before we commence, just a reminder that the town hall provides an excellent opportunity to engage with management and participate in a Q&A session with them. With that in mind, please submit any questions you may have into the Q&A tab located at the top of this screen. After the presentation, I will be delighted to moderate submitted questions from our audience. With us this morning is Executive Chairman Michael Wood, who is here to discuss Argentina's Vicuña District's remarkable mineral potential. And we'll also be discussing Sendero's latest results and future catalysts. And now, without further ado, I will turn it over to Michael. The stage is yours. Thanks, Joanne. No, great to be here. Thanks for having us. Great to uh, you know inform your audience about Sendero and, and what we're doing. You know, we're very excited about the property we have in in the Vicuña district, who really one of the most uh, exciting exploration districts in the world right now. Uh, been a been a great success over particularly the last kind of two or three years. Some amazing results. So. Look, we're a new player in the district. Uh, we just listed last October uh, on the tier six fee and uh, just completed our, our main and Joe program in the district. So, you know, very exciting times for the company uh, and great to just walk through the presentation and then, yeah, hopefully we can have some extensive Q&A at the end of the presentation. So like you can see here uh, on, the, on the cover slide, just a drill rig. Jewelry, drilling actually uh, finished on Thursday. Snow came on, on Saturday, pretty heavy snowstorm up in the Andes. Uh, and we had to stop drilling on, on Thursday. We're very happy with this initial program. You know, great to have, we completed eight holes. Great, great to have done that in our maiden program. Lo really looking forward to getting out more results. So far, we only got out three results. Hopefully, we can get a, another batch out shortly. And, and we're very excited about what we're seeing. And we're seeing very similar geology to, to the other deposits in Vicuña. Uh, really big scale deposits is what it's all about on these polymetallic mines. That's what we're after, and, and that's what we've been exploring to find. So we have a big land package. Actually, we're the second biggest landowner in Vicuña after the London group of companies. Uh, we have 120 square kilometers in our right, 100% owned. And then we recently uh, executed an option agreement with the Larioca provincial government for an earning deal on another 91 uh, square kilometers, giving us a total of just under 212 square kilometers, which is obviously a very, very substantial land package. We, we've identified clusterings of targets across this already. Uh, really very prevalent with, with big mineral systems. Uh, and as we're starting to show already, decent grade in our, in our initial drilling. Uh, I think as we factor in, we're optimistic, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll keep hitting better grade and really want to show both scale and grade. And, but really where we are, I think the key message is scale is the key. You really need the scale to make these big polymetallic mines work. And that's always been our thesis and, and will continue to be so. Uh, we've identified a cluster of porphyry, epithermal, and what's called telescope systems. And the telescoping is very prevalent in Vicuña. And what's created these supergiant deposits, where you've got a telescoping of high sulfidation epithermal, porphyry mineralization, telescoped into one giant ore body. And that's the big prize. And that's what we saw on our third drill hole at La Gita. And we vectored in on that and completed the rest of our drilling at La Gita for this uh, main and drill program. Our technical team, we believe, is very strong for a junior company of our size. Uh, our CEO, unfortunately, can't join the call today. He's he's in Kazakhstan, uh, so uh, he's unable to join. It would have been great to have him on. Um, he he ran Barrack in Argentina, ran Yamanu in Argentina, ran Anglo Gold Ashanti, ran major mines all over the world, really a, a very established mine operator. He, he bought the claims back in 2018 and really oversees operations in country. Our chief technical advisor is David Royal, an Australian geologist, ran uh, a number of major companies, exploration teams in, the, in South America, focused on the Andes back in the mid-90s and had major, major uh, discoveries in that period and since. And then we're, we're, we're a very small player in the district. Our market cap today, unfortunately, is in a region of $10, $11 million. You know, everybody else is, is a billion plus. Uh, so, you know, uh, quite a bit of upside potential from our side. And very strong inside ownership. 33% of the company is owned by the uh, board of directors. So this is a bit more on the key people involved. Touched on Hernan, David. Uh, we also have good capital markets expertise on the board. Jimmy Lim, a very uh, established uh, resources banker in Asia. It's great to have him on the board. Zachary Goldenberg in, in, out of uh, Toronto as well. 
And then very strong in-country presence, really, thanks to Hernan. Fernando Lopez, who was uh, Hernan's my manager at, um, at Yamana, is our project manager, and some very strong in-country local uh, Argentinian geos. So this is our capital structure at 20 cents. We're about 13 million market cap. We're a little bit below that today. Um, we've got 66.4 million shares outstanding. And we'd have the best part of about four and a half million dollars come in if all that warrant money came in, which we expect to see come in over the course of the next 12 months. It all expires in uh, September uh, 2025. So a relatively tight capital structure and, and very pleased to get through this initial drilling. And then we want to get out results to the market and then move forward with a bigger program later in the year. Uh, we're, we're at the top of the Andes, really a bit of seasonality going on up there for a for a junior company like ourselves, where we'll only operate in the field in the Argentina spring and, and summer period. So this is Vicunia and you know a lot of excitement around it and rightly so. Um, it was historically perceived as a gap between Mao Conga and Al Indio. And it's been proven really by uh, some amazing exploration by mainly the London group of companies in the Northern part to be not a gap at all, but the home to a lot of metal uh, and really a big developing new district in, in the Central Andes. The Central Andes contributes about 40% of the co copper, global copper supply, really is the, is the heart of, of global copper supply and definitely a big new district that's developing that will be multi-billion tons, tons of ore for sure, but it already is. It'll be, it'll be fascinating to see how big it gets. There's some great exploration going on in the southern part as well. With companies like ATEX also making some great discoveries. And, and the geological view is this will probably end up as one continuous magmatic belt right through the uh, right through the central Andes. So we're focused in the northern part in what's formerly been defined as the Vicunia belt. It's highlighted here in the back uh, at the, the light gray area. This is our property, the 100% owned property in the red, uh, joint venture ground in the pink. And, and we're, we're identifying a number of, of targets across this and really this is taken from a, from a technical paper that came out last uh, last May, which written by Richard Silito and really the Landines, focusing on the unique geology here. And you're right at the top of the Andes. You've had extreme telescoping taking place, creating these supergiant deposits where you've had the, the morphing of high sulfidation epithermal, which are big deposits in their own right, or three deposits, which are big deposits in their own right, into one telescope ore body, which is substantial. And what we're seeing and what other deposits have seen in the district is actually that below the epithermal cap, there's a lot of porphyry mineralization going on. Really swarms of porphyries are coming out below that and then creating these big epithermal caps to surface, what, what geologists refer to as litho caps. So we, we've really seen that in, in, in La Gita and also then kind of vectored in on other potential targets we have on the property with litho caps that we know are hosting gold mineralization from historic geochemistry. So sometimes litho caps are barren, but when they do get affected by high sulfidation and thermal mineralization and poor free mineralization below, they can be a great source of mineralization. Very easy to explore and consequently very easy to mine, very continuous mineralization. So that's why we've really got excited about La Gita, where we see scale and reasonable grade in, in our first hole and hopefully better grade to come in the, in the following holes. So this is our property. Uh, the, the yellow is, is the 100% on claims. The, the green is a joint venture. And these are our core targets for now. And you can see we've added in a couple. Of those, those of you that have been following us, we've added a couple in in a bit more detail, particularly with Zuko down here. And the southern part of the property is a very interesting litho cap. Very similar structure setting to La Gita, where you've got the, the, the intersection of major northwest and northeast faulting. And within that, you've got advanced geologic alteration hosting what we know is gold mineralization from, from uh, surface geochemistry. Now, you, just we touch on here, we've got the four, the four main deposits in the district. You can see already there's multi-billion tons here. To, get, to give some kind of reference, Escondida, you know, regarded as the kind of flagship of, of copper mines, is about five billion tons. You can see here the Landines are already getting pretty close to that. I think, you know, if you actually factor in the... Uh, the inferred resources, I think it is pretty much already there. These are just the indicator and MLI. So, you know, super giant deposits already being found. You know, they've, they've made another amazing discovery at Lunawasi. Some, you know, some crazy grades coming out there. Again, looks like it's got scale. Uh, and, and really, there's probably going to be a lot more discoveries to be made in the district. There's a few other companies like ourselves, and Mirasol over to the uh, to the west, and, and a private company called Magores to the south as well. They're also doing some good exploration in, in, the, in the vicinity. So 
this is Lad Eater. This is where we've really vectored in on, on this initial drilling and where we're very excited about. And you can see these these are the holes that we put in in this season. We, we, we completed the first two holes on different targets, La Pena and Tambarius, and we can touch on those briefly. But this is really where we feel we're into something meaningful and where we feel we're going to ask to add the best value for our shareholders as, as, a, as a junior company for now. So you can see on the left, we've got the induced polarization, the IP. This is an extremely large, high IP anomaly. You can see all around it as well, still very high, P, uh, sorry, still very high um, IP levels. And we focus on, on this triangle structure with the core of our initial drilling. And th th we actually believe for now the prevalent dominant fault is, is the Northwest, but that's really kind of still to be tested. We can see ma massive fault here. And, and what we've seen in these initial holes is extreme folding at depth as well. Um, so, you know, very interesting uh, geologically, quite tough drilling conditions. Uh, also, when you throw, throw in the, the high sulfidation clays that we've been dealing with, it, it has kind of slowed us down. Done a, done a few less meters than we'd hoped. I think we'd come in about three and a half thousand in the end. But um, you know, very interesting geologically, and you know, very exciting from from my internal perspective. I think the market, unfortunately, wasn't particularly excited on our first drill hole that we put out from this target. But I think as they see more, they will they will start to get more excited over over the next kind of few two two to four five weeks. I think we'll have a couple more batches of holes out. So. Look, very exciting. And then if you look on the right, here's the ground magnetics. And the way we see it, and we don't have it in the slide, but we have 3D magnetics that are happy to share with people if they're interested, is, is really three core magnetic centers, probably porphyry centers, stretched over about two kilometers with high sulfidation surrounding it. Uh, and if that thesis comes out, and that is a big ore body. I mean, just this zone here, we're looking at a, a a substantial oil body, multi hundred million tons. If we actually start to prove up this whole thing it is, is one, then, you know, that, that'll be an amazing discovery. I think, you know, I've been asked a few questions about this bottom right corner as well. Uh, that's part of the JV ground, and you can see pretty obviously the magnetics are continuing down there as, as the IP does. This IP anomaly is down here. So, you know, definitely some interesting targets down there that we want to explore as we get our teeth more into this uh, additional ground that we've picked up. So, yeah, very exciting geologically to have as a junior company to be advancing this uh, and, you know, really looking forward to the coming period where as we develop this uh, deposit, hopefully put on a resource, start to show economic studies and move it towards showing it's a, it's a real a real mine in, in the coming years. So this is this is the first drill hole we put out from from an Agita. Uh, unfortunately, the, the stock market didn't like it at all. Um, we got we went from 30 cents to 20 cents in, in literally 15 minutes when we put this uh, drill, drill hole out, and I think caused a bit of panic, unfortunately, from some of our investors. And I, I think what we've been trying to get across is look, this is very economic grade in the district. And I, what I've been trying to touch on with people I've been speaking to over the last couple of weeks is is in different locations. The grade needs to be different to make a mine work, right? And, and uh, it, where we are, it's a very low cost jurisdiction. Argentina is a very low, a very low cost jurisdiction. Uh, the, you know, the two major costs of mining are labor and power. They're both very low in Argentina. So you can start to put these deposits of substantial scale with low grade and make a lot of money. Alan Brera is a key example of that, slightly further north, one of, I think, Glencore's most profitable mines. Um, that was not a particularly high grade mine. And made them a lot of money and you can look at the feasibility studies uh, on, on jose Mario that they have already and you know the mpv is very impressive on, on a very similar grade to this hole it is what they have so far so you know we, we, we were very excited about it and i think investors are starting to realize okay yeah this is meaningful where they are and look if, if you look at the last slide it's on the edge of the system this isn't into the core of one of those core free centers it's on the edge the top of the hole was the high sulfidation uh section uh, the first 70 meters, we had 0.66 gold equivalent uh, in, in pretty interesting pressure. Uh, you see you see throughout the whole very continuous mineralization, also very nice for mining. Uh, and then we've, we've merged down into two phases of porphyry. So we've seen in this first hole, not only one porphyry, but two phases of porphyry. Uh, we saw the better grade in the older porphyry and then the younger porphyry that's coming later as I've printed that slightly lower grade, but very interesting to understand these. Already sent them off for age dating. Uh, what really fascinating to see kind of what age they are to understand how they relate to um, to other porphyries in Vicunia and potentially also Maraconga. And then look, we've lost this hole not because we drilled out the bottom of the porphyry, but we've drilled into a post mineral fault zone. Um, so we, we really tried to get through it. We did about 100 meters into this fault zone and unfortunately couldn't come out the bottom. And our vice with drill contractor stopped the hole. But yeah, very exciting geologically what we've seen. 
great high self resolution epithermal telescoping into porphyry. Uh, you know, lots of different styles of mineralization in the hole. And uh, yeah, I mean, I think you know we're very keen to get out more holes to the market as soon as we can. Uh, and I think as the market starts to see more holes, they will start to understand the the impact of of this discovery. So. This is just touching on some of the historic drilling that was done at, at La Gita. And you can see there is higher grade from, from the historic drilling, which was relatively shallow. And a lot of those high grade holes, particularly PNR3, uh, P PNR28, was up in the northern part in the high sulfidation system. So, you know, we're quite optimistic that we will start to see some high grade holes coming as well. I think some investors are still a little bit skeptical on the grade. Uh, and I think that will also be something that will help, uh, you know, as advance the, the, the valuation of the company over the uh, coming weeks. So that's La Gita. That's really the focus of the company going forward. I think, you know, already strategizing for, for next season. I think talking about deep, deeper <clears throat> geophysics, uh, MT is something we've internally been discussing, which was, was used a great effect at Philo to help them find a feeder system. And I think the way we're looking at it is, um, <laughs> Look, we, we've got a little cap of, of scale. We know we've got these three porphyry intrusions. Like, you know, where where's the kind of high grade stuff coming up into this litho cap? Is it, what is obviously the big bonanza prize? Maybe it's actually coming up mainly through your fault. You know, that's all to kind of be explored, and definitely want to look at the deeper the, the deep deeper geophysics. Sorry, to, to get an understanding of that, and hopefully there's some pretty obvious signs of depth where where we can see. Okay, this is probably the feeder, and uh, you know. That, that will definitely be a focus for, for drilling uh, later in the year. But but look, this is where we started drilling as well, La Pena. Um, unfortunately, you know, lower grade than we were hoping. Um, we hit continuous mineralization from surface through the two, first 226 meters. But as you can see, average grade of uh, 0.22 gold equivalent. And, you know, a bit of rethinking going on on this. I think definitely we feel if, if we drove slightly north into this, we might have some, some high grade. But a lot of positive geo, geo, uh, geology, sorry, from this initial hole, Hit, there's definitely a porphyry body here. You know, what, what we kind of have felt internally is this is just kind of a more standard porphyry rather than the telescoping that we've seen at La Gita, and we've got a bit lower grade. But we're definitely not into the quarter system, and if we start to find a quarter system, the grade will definitely pick up. So definitely something we're still very keen on internally, uh, but we do have to focus our, our resources, obviously, as a small junior company for, for the immediate future. So, look, I think we kind of describe it as a technical success, and uh, you know, hopefully, we we can we can uh, put a few more holes in. I mean, obviously, one hole is really not testing a target, uh, and it's, and you know, hopefully, hit some higher grade than, than we did in that initial hole. The um, the second hole went into Tambarius. This is in a, in a big kind of cold area down where we've got two main targets: Tambarius and and, and Servo at its south. And uh, this is Tambarius. This is where the, the second hole went in. Again, beautiful magnetic anomaly. Again, continuous minimization from surface, very similar grade actually to La Pena. And again, you know, clearly a nice system, but definitely this first one hole that went into it was not in the core of it. So definitely a bit of rethinking. I think the view is probably if we went a bit more central, we, we might be picking up a bit higher grade than we got in this first hole. So again, something that is definitely still on the table and definitely still to be explored and potentially could be a nice deposit on, on this fast property. And then finally, I think just to touch on, we, we have a, a very compelling target that we really want to get to and haven't, unfortunately, this season, Servo to South. Here's the ground magnetics actually recently, uh, or, or just process. And you can see, again, a real obvious clustering of, of intrusions. Um, here, here's the, this is some trenching we've done this season, an extremely long trenching system, about two kilometers. And you can see this is just a copper. The gold number is also pretty solid. A very continuous minimization through this trench and definitely focusing on the center as you can see that the geochemistry is picking up so look something we definitely want to get to uh it, you can see in, in the northern part as well there's a big anomaly here that this is we call it the green whale this is also something the team's very keen to get a drill hole into so really you know we have so many targets on this property but as a small junior company starting out we've really just got to focus our resources and our time onto where we feel we're going to get the best return for our shareholders and that's what we've done by focusing in on Lad Gita. Um, so that's really the overview of, of what we've been doing uh, this field season. I think what now we're going to do is completed drilling on, on Thursday. Yeah, heavy snowstorm came up on Saturday, unfortunately. Um, we will then you know, get out the results to the market as soon as we can over the coming weeks. Uh, I think within the kind of next month, month and a half, they should all be out. 
we'll then look to you know recapitalize a company digest the resources we have at our disposal and then plan an appropriate drill program for later in the year ideally we'd like to go back and do a much bigger drill program in the region of 10,000 meters plus but let's see how things uh, play out for, for you know with our share price and, and the capital that's available to us in the in the immediate future and then we'll plan accordingly based on that but you know very excited with what we have. I think really keen to show investors and the market more holes from Lajita, and hopefully they're coming very soon. Uh, and, and then I think you know people will start to digest the, the, the gravity of what we're finding here in a very big district with these super giant deposits. You know, we're getting into a, what we believe is a sizable discovery of definitely very workable economic grade. And once we start to get into the core of it, I think you, we could potentially start to see those kind of bonanza holes that some of the other discoveries in, in the district have shown to the market and, and really excited investors. So, Joanne, that's really the kind of overview. I think with that, we could uh, turn to a bit of Q&A. Great. Thank you so much, Michael, for a great update. We certainly have a global full house audience today. Thanks to the audience for tuning in this morning. Now, before we take questions, just a reminder once again, please place your questions in the Q&A tab located at the top of the screen. And our first question for today is, what scale potential do you see at the Olita target? Yeah, look, Joanna, I think like we touched on, like our, our kind of view internally is we wanted to find a kind of 200 plus, 200 million ton plus deposit of similar grade to the district. And we, we've seen that at all the targets that we've drilled this season, the potential for that size. And I think now we're starting to see as well, once we had that geophysics come back from that GDA, people have been following the company, you know, we really then prioritize the target. Because yeah, if we find that we do have three porphyries clustered together of size to have reasonable mineralization, and then we have this litho cap surrounding the three, that is a very big deposit, you know, probably billion ton plus, depending obviously on the depth. So like, we're, we're excited, but you know, just starting out and really hard to kind of gauge that on, on, on one drill hole, even the, even the um, even the six drill holes we put in this season is still just probing it, right? So that's why really, right. you know, we want to go back later in the year, start doing a lot more extensive drilling to really test this target and start to you know, put on a potentially a formal resource and, and move it forward in that manner. Yes, and I noticed earlier in your presentation, you did mention uh, Dick Silito, and maybe like for our, our audience who are not familiar with him, maybe you can talk about like how important it is to have somebody like Mr. Silito, you know, give their blessing to this project, or at least, you know, ha have a report by him. Yeah, I mean, I think he's regarded as the preeminent porphyry expert in the world today. So, you know, he he, he brought his paper out defining mm -hmm. the Vacunia belt, which we're on, uh, and he, he nicely actually put on five targets in our property that actually coincide basically with five of our core targets, but we had no input in, into that. But, you know, just showing that it is no, that, you know, there's a lot of targets on our property that have very similar geology to the other targets in in, in the Vicuña Belt. So yeah, it, you know, it's great for us, Joanne. He, he did help apparently Anglo, Anglo American had part of our property back in the early 2000s. And he actually did help them, them with some of their targeting in, in that program back then. So he is quite Excellent. familiar with the property, but you know, not, doesn't, he, he helps bigger companies than, than ours, Joanne. So, yes, but it's nice to be <laughs> able to to have some recognition there for sure. Okay, so next question. That was for myself. Uh, any color on the visuals, uh, the current outstanding holes? Yeah, like I love to. I don't think, I, unfortunately, I, I you know it's kind of material, and uh, you know we, we want to get it out as soon as we can. The essays. I think you know we, we don't really want to be putting out descriptions until we have essays. I think we, we actually did that on. on on the first three and, and you know it's not something we kind of wanted to do we did it because i was going to pee that so you know look we'll, we'll put out descriptions with essay results that's that's how we'll, we'll we'll communicate to the market going forward great and were seven holes drilled in total eight eight drawn eight total. okay yeah. excellent um and how does the grade that you're finding now compared to other deposits in the district like where where do you think you're sitting i know it's early days but how do you how do you value it at this point? Yeah, and I think that's something that the market, you know, was disappointed with that initial that Jita hole. And we've been trying to say to people, look, this is in line with the Jose Maria resource grade, 
you know, so if you're saying our hole isn't economic, then you're saying Jose Maria pretty much isn't economic. Now, that, I'm pretty sure it's going to go into construction pretty soon. You know, the MPV is, I think, the best part of $3 billion. Uh, and metal prices keep going up. So we, we're very happy. I think, you know, just trying to communicate that this is a low-cost jurisdiction. The grade that we need to find here is lower than we need to find if we're in Nevada or Arizona or BC or, or, or Vancouver. Or, sorry, or, or Quebec, Jerome, where, where you are, right? It's a lower cost jurisdiction, and that all, all, all needs to be factored in. I, th I think you know, talking with investors over the last couple of weeks, investors often forget that grade is like one part of the equation. You know, you, you're there to make money. Grade is part of revenue side of the equation, but the cost side of the equation is often more important. And we've actually seen that over the last couple of years in the mining industry, right, where the metals have gone to all time highs, and the and the miners are nowhere near all time highs because they've had cost blowups. Right. So right. I think that's also why now with, with the new Malay government in Argentina, there's a big influx of interest into Argentina because everybody in mining knows that there's amazing geology and it's low cost. So, you know, they're key boxes right. that you pick on, on any kind of deposit. And, uh, you know, w w that's what we're aiming for. We're aiming for scale, low cost. And, yeah, obviously we want the highest grade possible, but we don't need a percent equivalent yeah. to be making that work, right? Like Jose Maria's, Jose Maria's point, point 0.4 copper equivalent, um, Casaroni's, the actually only operating mine district, is even lower. Um, yeah. So, you know, I, I think that's just what we've been trying to get across to investors. Uh, you know, a lot of people flat out said to me, that doesn't work. And I, I said, okay, well, can you explain to me why? And not, obviously they can't, but they're, they're just informed that, you know, you need 1% you need equivalent. You need 1.5% right. equivalent. But they don't right. actually understand why. So uh, that's something, you know, we, we've been talking to. And I think as people kind of grasp that, you know, they will understand the, the value in the, in the company in, in just based on large ETA. Right. And, you know, you brought up the politics of, of the country and the area. And, you know, have, what has been your experience, particularly in the province that you're operating in? Yeah, no, that's also a question I get asked a lot, Joanne. And uh, <clears throat> look, we're in La Rioja, that is a very small province. There's only 300,000 people living in La Rioja. It's not a mining province. Um, but then they realize, oh, hang on a second, we have a slice of this Facunia district, right? So Hanan SEO had already bought kind of the core ground. We've now option based, uh, you know, formed a partnership with the local government, which again, I think is very beneficial to the company to, to uh, help them advance the ground that they have. Um, so, you know, I think we have a very good relationship with the local government. They've been fantastic to us from day one. A lot of people were very critical of Larry Ocker. I can tell you when we were listing the company, um, they, they, you know, oh, if only you in San Juan. Right? That was a lot of the feedback I got and people didn't want to come in. But Larry Ocker is not a mining jurisdiction, right? There's, there was a bit of history back in the 2000s where Barrick had made a discovery uh, right by a town. Right? So it was a town of 10,000 people that were completely opposed to the mine going ahead. Uh, and that caused a bit of a hoo-ha around, around that time. I think it was 2007-ish. Um, but apart from that, there's very little uh, activity taking place in the district until now. And, and yeah, they're very excited. They're very excited, very supportive. Everything they've said they'll do, they've done. And, uh, you know, fantastic support so far from, from the provincial government to develop this. And they know, look... If we can become a mine in a province of 300,000 people, we'll probably become one of the biggest employers in the province, definitely probably the biggest taxpayer. Um, so, you know, they understand that and they're very supportive to see this project advanced. And the communities are, you know, the local communities, of course, this is very important in mining nowadays. I mean, I'm not going to call it ESG. I don't even know what to call it anymore, but it's certainly, let's call it community sustainability. Um, hopefully, you know, the communities are on board uh, with what you're doing. And, and I mean, you're, again, it's early stages, but this is the time to get the communities on board. Yeah, exactly. And that's the beauty of having somebody like Hanan, who's operated major mines in Argentina for many years. He understands that. And yeah, we have from day one. And, and look, we're no, like, this is also the beauty of Acuna. We're nowhere near anything. Um, it's about 250 kilometers to the nearest small community, which is about two, less than 2,000 people, right? So you're really in the middle of nowhere. There's no kind of social issues. But yeah, look, it, it, there's, there's potentially very well paying jobs here for, for people. Uh, and definitely that's something of great interest for, for the local communities. They want well paying jobs coming into their communities, into the province. And yeah, so far, very supportive. Great. And have you had strategic interest in assessing the project? 
Yeah, we, like we have, John. And I think, you know, we're in a very prime location, right? You know, kind of like, you know, like real estate. We're in a hot, hot district. So there's definitely interest. You know, I think, you know, we're just starting out from, from, a, from a junior company. And I think, you know, but yeah, I think, you know, we, we are obviously a very prime location. I think, you know, there's, there's interest. And, and, and I think, you know, the, 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 the strategic investors understand the potential here, right? And uh, right. I think that they've been quite impressed by what they've seen so far and you know let's let's see how things play out but for now you know i think you know, our main focus will be on on cost of capital uh, you know we want to get right. the, the best cost of capital for our shareholders to advance the project and we'll assess where that comes from you know over the coming months excellent and who would you say are your most prospective neighbors like who are who are the uh, more advanced neighbors in your district well, well, one being mining, right? They they run Casarani's, the operating mine. They own own Jose Maria, which is ready to be built. I think you know could well be imminently uh, you know construction decision coming. Uh, there's then obviously Filo del Sol, which is the, the the exploration darling of the district. You know some amazing drill results. Uh, that's in Filo mining. Uh, Luna Wasi is in Enjex uh, resources along with Lasalados. So, you know, there's all, all amazing discoveries, Joanne. You know, we, we, we would love to, you know, be a fraction of what they are. And I, I, that's, I think, a key thing as well. We don't need to be as big as they are um, to, to, to kind of make this work. They're all very big discoveries that are, are you know, fantastic exploration. And that's why the, the, the market likes them so much. But just to give context, right, you know, NGEX is almost $2 billion today that they own. Uh, that's a lot of so Lunawasi. Philo is, I don't know what it is now, I don't track it too closely, but two and a half to three billion. You know, and then Lundy, Jose Maria is in Lundy Mining, which is, I think, about $10 billion market cap. So, you know, obviously a lot of bigger companies than us. We're a small junior just starting out. So, hard to kind of compare. And obviously, they're a lot more advanced. But I think right. that's what we get across the potential. If, if people start to see, okay, yeah, they're on to a, a scale discovery that has the economics, you know, the, the uplift in our valuation could be pretty rapid. Right. So it's fair to say that uh, you're on their radar or they're certainly keeping an eye on what you're doing. Have you had any discussions or contact? I mean, without being, uh, you know, without uh, going. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Like they're, they're being too material, but it's no, 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 of course. Like, they're being fantastic, Joe. I'm very supportive of us. But I think they've right. got like we're 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 tadpole compared to them in that you know great white. So uh, I think they've got right. bigger things to think about than Sendero and, and you know a lot a lot more <laughs> advanced exciting projects than yeah. as at this stage. So like yeah, they've been very yeah. supportive this round. Really, you know, fantastic and you know really appreciate everything. But yeah, I think for now, you know, we we need to advance ourselves before right. we kind of seriously uh, become of interest to them. Okay, great. So um, maybe I'm, I'm sure you've talked about this, but maybe you can just repeat once again, what really are the exploration goals over the next coming 12 months? And I know you're seasonal for your drilling, but what do you, how do you see that unfolding? Yeah, like we, we've done this initial drill program uh, and in the end, back to the into we, we use this kind of as a, you know, reconnaissance drilling across the property where we've got these multiple targets. And then, you know, we, we saw in that first drill hole at Lajita, well, okay, this is what we're after. Telescope system, good grade, you know, district scale grade. And I think we're optimistic there will be high grade to come from some of these falling holes. But we've, we've kind of circled around that kind of central magnetic anomaly. The last hole seven went into the center of it. And then actually, then we stepped down and tested that eastern uh, magnetic anomaly on, on the last hole. Um, so that's kind of been our focus. Now let's digest the results and come back and yeah, do a lot more systematic program. That was kind of probing. That was you know just probing this. I think we'd love to come back and do a more systematic program on the system. Really start to understand it. Like like touched on, definitely the big prize is where's the where's this feeder system that's feeding this lipo cap coming from? That's what we're after, right? And that most certainly is going to be higher grade than what we've shown in that first hole. Uh, and could be bonanza grade, right? You know, when when you have these lipo caps affected, usually the the, the feeder system is is, um, is is can be bonanza grade stuff. Like a filo, filo is a lipo cap at the top, and that hole forty one was kind of the main feeder. And you know, I forget the numbers, but it you know it was a stunning hole. Um, right. We, we we look a lot actually at a, um, a deposit in in the Philippines, Joanne. That's what the the technical team has been referring to called Lepanto, also a lipo cap with a big northwestern fault running through it. And actually, the fault was the feeder system. Yeah, for that little cap. And in that fault, they got crazy, crazy, crazy numbers. 
So um, yeah, look, uh, we, we want to understand a lot more. You know, we're just starting out, and you know, really pleased with what we've seen. Now we'll focus the, the majority of resources here, but like we'd still love to keep testing the the regional, like the district scale potential of the property. But you know, it depends on the resources we have at our disposal. Uh, we you know we need to be frugal with our spending as a junior company, and uh, and you know use use yep. it where we think it's going to add the best value to our share price. Excellent. And a couple of stock questions here. Have any of the warrants been exercised? Yeah, yeah, actually quite a few. I think we had about $250,000 come in from from about 30 cent warrants and some of the 20 cent uh, finders warrants that the brokers got. Also actually a couple of the 20 cent options did get exercised as well. Um, so that, that was nice to see, you know, since we put the journal out, those warrants aren't in the money anymore. So um, nothing in the last couple of weeks, but hopefully, yeah, we, you know, we get back above that exercise price and, and it starts to tick in again over the coming months. But yeah, we, ha we have had some, I, I think ballpark it's 250 to $300,000 has come in so far from, from those ones. And the next question is, what is the plan for the shelf? Is that the shelf prospectus are they, that they're talking about? Oh yeah, no, good question, Joanne. Yeah, yeah. sorry, I, 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 a few people had, had kind of mentioned this actually, and I, I don't think I've given a straight answer. So look, as a new listed company, you can't do a life offering um, for the first 12 months. So if you want to issue free trading shares, you have to do a shelf prospectus. So that's why we've done one. Actually, I think it should be in, in uh, I think it's basically now all approved and should be live within the next couple of days, if not sometime next week, if not this week, I think next week. So yeah, we've done a shelf prospectus that covers us for two years to raise up to $24 million. And we can do that with free trading shares. If we didn't do the shelf prospectus, we couldn't issue free trading shares until after October this year uh, via life offering. So in this window between now and October, the shelf gives us the ability to issue free trading shares, which now most investors expect. You know, Historically, there was almost a four-month hold, but now the life financing has come. You know, Now, particularly most of the institutional investors expect free trading paper. So that's why we've done that. Okay. And a couple of more questions. Uh, will you release all of the results at once or in batches? No, definitely in batches. I think we want to get out a ASAP. You know, I think we're, we're definitely not happy with what's happened to our share price. And, uh, you know, I think once people see more results, the, the share price will move move up meaningfully. So, yeah, as soon as we can. We're, we're, we're not going to be waiting till we get them all. I don't know if we'll just put out one hole, to be honest. But I think, you know, when we kind of got two or two, maybe three, you know, we'll come with another batch, but uh, right. we, we want to get out as soon as we can to the market and show people, you know, I think once people start to see more results, they can add more color to, to what we've been exploring and understand the deposit in more detail. Right. It seems like it's going to be a bit of an education process uh, for, you know, for the deposit and, and the results and for the, you know, for your shareholders. Um, go ahead, Michael. Oh, yeah. No, no, exactly, Joanne. And I think, yeah, I think a lot of people do. I think, unfortunately, maybe, you know, it, I, it, I think there's pros and cons where we are. It creates excitement. But I think then also maybe there was some disappointment when we put out 250 meters of 0.53 gold equivalent. I think some people are hoping for, you know, Philo style or Lunawasi style numbers in, in our initial right. drilling. And, you know, that I think they unfortunately were disappointed and decided that, you know, they prefer right. to move their money elsewhere. So... Um, well, and with and with the gold price being at an all time high now, are you feeling any trickle down effect from that? Like, you know, I know the the seniors are are starting to uh, get the benefit of that, but you know, what about you as a junior player in that commodity? Are you, you know, are you feeling that you're going to be uh, getting some love from from a higher gold price in the future at at the very least? Yeah, no, what definitely. It definitely helps, and I think what, you, like you say, there's definitely trickle down effects in in the industry, and we're now starting to see the majors move, but they're still you know, fractions of what they were, right? You know, yeah. Barrick is still seventeen, eighteen dollars. Newmont is thirty eight, thirty nine. You know, Newmont was seventy dollars. Barrick was thirty dollars, right? So I, know. I think what, the money's starting to come back into them, and then definitely it trickles down. And once it comes down to the juniors, the juniors are so small; it doesn't take much to really, really move. I mean, we saw in twenty twenty. Exactly. We saw in 2016, when these moves come, they're, they're violent to the upside. And yeah, look, it looks really promising in, in the metals market. And uh, I'm optimistic, yeah, the rest of the year could be very good for, for the junior market. 
Excellent. And can you discuss a little bit of the highlights of the JV that you, that you have currently and how it works? Sort of be a little more granular with that. Yeah, sure, sure. So look, we're earning in uh, to the ground. So there's an option agreement to earn in 80%, and then the provincial government would earn 20%. So we're to, we're to pay $5 million over four years, um, and we're to spend a total of $10 million over the four years across the whole portfolio, <laughs> right? So not just on the JV claims, but also on Penis Negras. And, you know, I can tell you, know, we've, we've spent, uh, well, we have to see at the end of the program, but we've, we've spent a reasonable amount of that in this first job program, right? So um, I think within two, another job program like this will be pretty close to it. If we, if we you know, do a bigger job program, as we hope later in the year, we probably will already be pretty close to that number within kind of two seasons. So we, we don't see any kind of issues with that. And look, it's great to, great to have this additional ground. There's two little cap targets known as well on it. Um, we definitely want to explore in more detail, but we, I mean, we have so much. And, and like we touched on as well, definitely we feel the ground southeast from Lajita, which is in, in that JB claim, is definitely of in great interest as well. So great to have that area as well. So, yeah, you know, we, we're really pleased to, to have it and really, you know, cement our relationship uh, with, the, with the local government and have advanced this area forward uh, from a geological perspective. Excellent. So the final question of the day is, I always ask this question because it's, I think it's sort of gives a vision for the company. So what is the five-year plan for the company and what is the ultimate goal? Like, where do you want to be? What do you see for this company in five years time? Well, I, I think the ultimate goal, Joanne, is we, you know, we've been bought out within a couple of years and, you know, we all made a lot of money. Um, so I, I think there's a good chance this company doesn't exist in five years. I think, yeah, maybe two or three years, you know, it runs. Yep. I think we, we want to yep. show a meaningful discovery that will create a lot of value. You know, finding meaningful discoveries that are very economic, are rare in the world today. Mm. And, and we feel we have the potential to do that. So, look, our strategy is to make a discovery and be bought out by a major mining company. That's our right. goal. Uh, and I think, yeah, I think that can happen in less than five years. Key it high and let it fly, as they say. Uh, that's great. That's great. Okay. Well, we are at the top of the hour, um, and we'll end our Q&A session there. So if anyone has any other questions, please forward them directly to the company. They'll be delighted to answer any other questions that you may have. Michael, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Is there anything that you would like to say to the audience uh, before we sign off? No, that was great. Thanks, Joanne, for hosting us. No, fantastic to, to you know update investors. And yeah, please don't hesitate to reach out with any questions. And yeah, as soon as we can, we'll get more drill, drill results out to the market. And uh, you know, I think you know we're we're excited by what's coming, and hopefully you guys will be too. So uh, no, thanks for your time, everybody, and, and hopefully we can update people in the near future. Thank you once again, Michael, for a great introduction to Sendero. Just a reminder. <clears throat> <clears throat> that this town hall will be available on the Sendero website and on all of our socials within the next 24 hours. So before we sign off, please ensure that you fill out the short, quick questionnaire at the end of the presentation, as this helps us and the company communicate more effectively with you in the future. So thank you for joining us, and we will see you all on the next town hall forum. Goodbye. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.